There is nothing special in this world. Nothing magic. It is just physics. It is very closely bonded to the human race. The first experiment the newborn makes is suction pump, that is milk from bottle to mouth. So in every life, every moment is defined by physics. Let us explore the world of physics with our Nistel's portable and microscale lab. Today we're gonna find out whether the given material is electric conductor or an insulator. For that we need four items. Power source with dry cells, plug with a key, circuit board, torch bulb with the holder and connectors. So now we're gonna connect dry cells to the plug, plug to circuit board, circuit board to torch bulb and from there to dry cells. And to connect all these we need the help of crocodile clips or banana clips. So now we connected all these and you can see that the bulb is not glowing because the circuit is open. Now we will close the circuit using the key and now you can see the bulb glow just because the circuit is closed. So now using this circuit, we are gonna find out whether the given material is conductor of electricity or an insulator. So first we will check with wood. If we insert the wood, we can observe that bulb is not glowing. Wood is an insulator. Next we insert the metal into the plug and you can see the bulb glowing. So metal is an conductor of electricity. If I insert the glass into the plug, you can see bulb is not glowing. So glass is an insulator. And next I insert plastic into the plug and you can see that bulb is not glowing. So plastic is an insulator. Do you know rubber is an insulator or conductor of electricity? Just check it. Now we are gonna demonstrate expansion of metal solids with the help of ball and ring apparatus. So now ring and ball are at room temperature and you can see ball passes through the ring easily. So now we are gonna show you the expansion of solids by heating. First we lit up the spirit lamp. Now we will heat the ball with the help of forceps for few minutes and then check whether the ball passes through the ring or not. It's not passing so solid expands. Now we will cool the ball and ring to the room temperature. So on cooling we can see the ball passes through the ring. So metal expands on heating and contracts on cooling. Now we are gonna prove that pressure varies with the depth of liquid. For this we need the apparatus fixed with two syringes and the level of liquid in two syringes is equal. One end of the tube is connected to syringe and another is connected to the funnel with the balloon. Now we will dip this funnel into the water and you can see when the pressure is going down liquid in the first syringe goes down. And the level of the liquid in the second syringe rises when the depth of liquid goes down. If we release the pressure, we can see that level of liquid in the two syringes is equal. So here we can prove that pressure varies with the depth of liquids. Now we are going to demonstrate converging and diverging of light rays with the help of convex lens and concave lens. This is the arrangement to make the light rays parallel. If we place the convex lens, we can see that the parallel light is merging. This is the point where rays are merging. And now we are going to show divergence of the light rays using concave lens. If we place the concave lens, we can clearly see the divergence of light rays. Now we are going to demonstrate the production of magnetic field through circular coil carrying current. For this experiment, we need AC and DC generator which generates 15 volts, circular coil of 500 turns and then compass. So now we will see how the magnetic field is produced. When we rotate the handle of generator, DC current flows through the coil and it produces magnetic field. So the magnetic field of circular coil interacts with the magnetic field of compass which is shown in the line of the alignment of the compass. Now we will change the polarity of the cables red one to black one and black one to red one. Generate the electricity by rotating the generator. So we demonstrated production of magnetic field through circular coil carrying current. 
Now we are going to demonstrate how to find out the focal length of the convex lens. For this we need an object, convex lens and then screen. Now we are going to focus the screen to get the inverted image of the object. So at this point we calculate the distance between object and convex lens is u and the distance between the convex lens and screen is v. So 1 by f is equal to 1 by v minus 1 by u. So with this formula we can find out the focal length of the convex lens.